All right, let me show you what I have going on. I'm not gonna keep you long, but I just wanted to show you a little something, something. Okay, but I got these at Michael's, okay? It was on clearance. I can't remember how much they were, not much. So what I did, so you see all the glitter and stuff on there, right? I sanded all that off. I'm using these little lines um, to, to place my molds on, okay? So let me show you what I'm using. I've got this mold which is the trimmings one mold. And I'm liking this one right here. And when I put these together, you're gonna see there's gonna be a little bit of opening. And so I like, love actually, this little mold. It's just a little trim mold. Just kind of a little beaded mold. So I've already made a few. So let me just show you real quick. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a little bit of starch to my mold here. Let's move this out of the way. Okay, this helps it release. And I'm gonna give you some tips on these molds as we go. Okay, so I am using the IOD air dry clay. Okay, it's to me it's just the very best. And then I just roll it up, get it um kind of work it in a ball, and then I just kind of do it this way, for the trim anyway, all right? And then I just press it in here. And then I just use my thumb to kind of slide it down and to get the excess off. All right, so I just pull the excess off. You want this part to be flat, okay? The very top of your piece right here, which is actually the bottom. When you flip it out, it's gonna be your bottom, and you want that to be really flat. So you can get, sometimes I'll just take a little putty knife. Start in the middle though, don't start down here. Because, so, I don't even know if you saw me pull out the mold, or the clay out of the mold, okay? Just like this. Okay, so I'm gonna just put this right it up because I want this little pink. See right there in the in the star. I, I'm kind of going with these angles with my with my clay. I'm gonna take a little exacto knife, okay? And I'm gonna just kind of cut it here. Now this is one that's already dry, okay? Well, it's not completely dry because I put it in these baggies. I'm gonna go ahead and glue it. All right, so here's my tight bond glue. This is what I like to use. And so now I'm just gonna glue this down because I can't get it exactly like I want it until I get it glued down, I think. It's just, it did dry a little bit, but I just rub the glue on the back and I make sure that I get really good on the sides, just completely covered up. I'm gonna just glue it right there like that, actually. Next one is gonna go right there, and I'm just gonna keep coming down like this, okay? And these, this is gonna be great. All right, again, I glue these down while they're still pliable because you want them to be, um, to be able to mold to what you're um, putting it on. Say, for instance, if I was putting it on something round, you would wanna be able to form it like this going around your piece. That there. Cut this off right here, which is even with the little tree. I may give it just a teeny tiny extra bit. Now this side I'm gonna flip it because the branches are going in the opposite direction and I kind of want to just piece them in there. Just lay it all the way across kind of line up, I'm lining up my little branches like they're gonna kind of fit in with each other, kind of like this, okay? All right, so you see where I've started, okay? But look, you're saying, yeah, but you've got those little spaces right there. Yeah, I know, and I don't like that either. So look, this is what we're gonna do. So the classic elements mold has this one little beaded part right there that I just love, I use it all the time. Okay, and I've got one already made. Okay, got one already made. So, I'm just gonna fit it right over that opening, like this. Okay, and that is just gonna 
gonna be so good, so good. All right, it's a little bit, it's a little tricky because it is on an angle. questions I get the most are, it shrinks, it shrinks a little bit. What can I do to fill it in? All right, go ahead and let it dry. See, look how cute that are. It's going to be so cute, right? And I feel like it's, yeah, that one. That one was a little crooked. I can't see exactly when I'm, I know what it is. I'm going to have to cut some of this off. It's just tricky. That star, maybe I should have just left it complete. Okay, so if you have little openings, you can fill them in with more clay like this, but if it's, if it's like cracked trim along the side of a piece, let me make sure that's on straight. All right, what I do, I will Fill it in, I'll let it dry, okay? And wherever there's cracking, I will take, um, I'll put, I'll take a little bitty paintbrush, okay? Maybe something like this. Say there's cracking and it left some open spaces like right here, something right in there. Take some glue, okay? Paint a little glue in there. Take a little bit of the clay and then just kind of roll it. You may not even need that much but just roll it in your hand, okay, to get a little piece, all right, something like that, okay, and then just fit it in, like fit it in, like, just like that, okay, and then it'll be all covered up, and you can, I'm just going to leave that right there because I'm about to put this right here when I put another piece. Another thing that I do that I think really has helped is as soon as I take them out of the molds and, and glue them on, I'll put my heat gun on there and it kind of sets them, it heats them and dries them without it shrinking. I don't get a lot of shrinking, I really don't. I don't know if that's why, because I do do that. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this one down. You could also use a uh, epoxy resin. You could use the fast casting resin. Again, I'm going to take some of this little trim bead, glue this on. So this is kind of like, like the the like garland, right? So the the first mold is kind of like the leaves, and I don't know if you notice. Look at real close. Can you see the little bitty red, like not red? They're not red, <laughs> but the little little dots on there. They're kind of like berries wanted to do something with that, that would be cute. So that's it. I mean, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go all the way down like that. Still, I didn't have a lot of shrinkage. Once you paint, see how it covers it up so well? I mean, it's just, it just fills it in all really nicely. I'm just gonna add a little wax. So this is DIY wax. All right, so I'm just gonna take a little brush, okay, and I have like a brush for each color wax. And it gets a little bit hard, so you can just moisten it back up, get it soft, just by rubbing your wax back on your lid, okay? Just gonna cover it all up really quickly. Let me just go down the sides first. Okay, and y'all know why we put this on, right? The clear wax is because when you use chalk paint like this, it's very porous and so that dark wax will just get all in there and it'll be hard to uh, manipulate it and wipe it back. It'll really seep in to your chalk paint. Okay, so I'm gonna get another little brush, okay? Same thing, it's kinda stiff because I've used it before. I'm just gonna take a little bit in there and look. Just kind of work your little brush around on the lid and it gets soft again. All right, so let's just get started up here at the top. Okay, and then you just start rubbing. Or just start brushing it on. This is 
where most people pan it because they're like, oh my gosh, I'm messing it up. You're not messing it up. Because since we put the clear wax down, we can wipe it off. And really get down in the crevices right here. Swirling my little brush around like this. And it really gets down in there. I would work in sections. See, here's a little torn t-shirt. You just wipe it off, okay? Because all I want to do is give it a little hint of just, not distress, but a hint of antiquing, really. 